Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is the final series of The Supernatural with me, Laura Maxwell, on Eternal Radio. And this is episode three. We've been talking to Dana Emanuel. She's a former ghost hunter and leader of a successful paranormal investigation team that toured Florida. In the last episode, Dana actually... As well as some of her testimony, she covered quite a lot. We looked at the Witch of Endor, um, Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Rich Man and Lazarus of Luke 16, and even about Jesus walking on the water and the confusion the disciples had when they first assumed it was Jesus' ghost. So lots of, of nuggets there, and I'm sure... Dana will share more with us today. So let's go across to say hello to Dana in Florida. Hey, Laura, how you doing? I'm okay, and how are you? Awesome. It's 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 wonderful to be on your show today. Well, it's wonderful to have you back. And um, last time you had mentioned towards the end of, of the show, that was episode two, you mentioned a little bit about the testing the spirits in Jesus' name which, of course, we we take that from 1 John 4. And um, it's such a great topic, that one, and and one that I think sometimes folks get a little confused over. Um, And really, it's something that I do mention now and then on my show with various guests and um, on my blog, which is our spiritualquest.com. I do have an article I wrote about testing the spirits, but it's not an extensive article. And I really feel that um, there is more to be said. And certainly Dana has some points that I would like to highlight. So highlight. So I would really love it, Dana, if you shared more about this topic. Oh, thank you, Laura. Um, I, I honestly have done the same thing, Laura. Um, so it's really common. I mean, I, I was doing it too. Um, you know, that's what I had thought, and you know, about as far as the testing the spirits. Um, and I, I, I think what I was actually just saying was that um, we should test the spirits. You know, if a spirit comes in front of us and, and rebuke it in Jesus' name. And if it, uh, for say, for instance, if it was an, a real holy angel, um, mm-hmm. I think that the holy angel would probably tell us, you know, fear not and that they are here to give us a warning, and they would give us a warning from God. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so in, in that sense, I, I totally agree, which I really kind of think that's the same thing you're saying. It's just if something shows up, rebuke it in Jesus' name. You know, mm-hmm. and if it is demonic, it will flee. So we will know, you know, that it is not of God. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, like I said, the thing that I was talking about pretty much was that, you know, a lot of people will uh, test test the spirits by making attempts to summon a demon in Jesus' name, you know, to summon something in Jesus' name, you know, and it's, Mm -hmm. uh, to me, that's really kind of the same thing, I guess, you know, as far as like necromancy or or consulting with familiar spirits, because they're both demons, you know, like you had told me, which I didn't even know that the word... um, a familiar spirit, what was it in the Hebrew, is actually demon. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's just certainly fit, and it made sense. So, uh-huh. but, um, but anyway, so, you know, it would be the same as, like, summoning a demon in Jesus' name. We can't just do something that God forbids us to do and add Jesus' name to it to make it okay. You mm-hmm. know, that mm-hmm. would be the same thing as if I were to go into a paranormal investigation and pray for protection for while I'm in there. I'm still doing something that's against God and against his word. So I'm still going to be, um, uh, you know, held under, you know, God's going to still hold me accountable for what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And we should not command them to perform in the name of Jesus. You know, and I have seen, 
demonologists do this, um, actually some pretty famous ones at that, but where I had seen them sitting at a table with a spirit board or uh, and, or sit there and tell something, well, knock once, you know, uh, you know and, and asking questions and stuff in the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. And, you know, we can't do that because that's like asking the demon to do something, you know, because we don't see that nowhere in Scripture, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but I do believe that we should, uh, you know, test the spirits. And if something manifests in front of us or, or anything like that, or we see a, a shadow figure come up in front of us, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And, and therefore, if it's not of God, it will flee. You know, of course, if we have the authority. <laughs> You know. Yeah, and, and that's, I suppose, what um, I was wanting you to elaborate on. Although I do agree with what you've said so far, um, you know, and I've saw that as well, where sometimes, you know, even deliverance ministers will end up basically really having a conversation with demons that are manifesting yeah. through a person, you know, instead of just casting it out because let's face it demons can tell lies anyway even if you command them to to talk to you in the name of Jesus they still tell lies um so but but yeah um you know I was thinking that um for example it doesn't always work if somebody uses the name of Jesus um a spirit doesn't always leave sometimes it comes back and sometimes it's just because the person actually needs some deliverance. Yes. And then they, they'll stop being hounded by spirits. And sometimes um, the name of Jesus doesn't work simply because the person using it isn't close to Jesus um, or really walking in his power and authority. Um, you know, And I know that oftentimes someone who isn't even a Christian will use the name of Jesus uh, to chase away a spirit and it does work uh, but yeah. they're kind of a using it like a magic word um, and it really only works long term if the person is walking in that relationship yes. um, with Jesus so that that was the kind of a thing I was wanting you to um, talk a little about as well yes um, I, that, I, that I, area I, of authority yeah yes yes and 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 the whole thing uh, you know using the name of Jesus like a magic wand, you know, Mm -hmm. um, adding it to something that we're not supposed to do and just wave, you know, the wand of the name of Jesus, thinking that it's just going to make it all go away and that it's all okay. That's witchcraft. When we're going outside of God's will and what God wants us to do and using his name, I mean, that's, you know, that's witchcraft too. And, um, you know, like, if we see an angel, we should rebuke it in Jesus' name, because if it is genuinely an angel, genuinely, I'm sorry, an angel, it would most likely respond by telling us not to fear, and that they would give us the warning God wanted them to give us, or they would mm-hmm. appear to save us in certain situations so that we could continue in doing God's work. Like if you look at um, Acts five, where it talks about it says, "But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple." to the people, all of the words of this life. You know, that's where um, uh, the angels had broke open the prison doors for the disciples to get out. You know, so, I mean, there, there's times that angels do do these things. So we just need to look at it and say, you know, um, when this angel approaches us, uh, does this line up with something we would see in Scripture? You know, mm-hmm. what is the message you know, that they're giving us? Is it a warning? Did the, And did the angel, like I said, approach us? And also... The, uh, if an angel were to communicate with us, I would, I would definitely believe they would make it clear what their warning is, and that would be it. Mm-hmm. They're not going to keep coming up with little mumbled words like, say, over EVPs or anything like that. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. going to hear clearly what they're wanting to tell us, and it will be mm-hmm. a warning, and that will be it, you know. Yeah, and then you probably never hear from that angel again the whole rest of your entire life. It, it wouldn't be popping up to talk to you every week or every other month or exactly yes it's not consistent with what the bible shows yes and they can talk about jesus all day long too if they want you know as far mm-hmm. as that goes um because in like uh first john four like what we was just you know talking about it says uh beloved believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of god 
because many false prophets are gone out in the world. It tells us right there why to try the mm-hmm. spirit, you know. Hereby know we the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. And it goes on to talk, but it also says in that same passage it says hereby know we this is in verse 6 hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error so Mm -hmm. that's the spirits too that we're looking at you know is this the truth that we're hearing or is it a spirit of error and Mm -hmm. then it says and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. So it's not just a matter of just asking that one quick question over uh-huh. an EVP recorder. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it yeah. doesn't work yeah. that way. Because I used to do that in the paranormal. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, we would sit and ask questions. And I would say, you know, do you believe that Jesus Christ come in the flesh? You know, and it was just, looking back at it, it was ridiculous that I was doing mm-hmm. that. Because that's mm-hmm. not really even what the verses is, is telling us to do, you know. Yeah, but it looks like that. You can see why people would do that. Me um, too, uh, yeah. Absolutely. And and I think as well, because we know, you know, from experience that, yeah, the demons will say that, that they believe Jesus came in the fe- in the flesh because we've got to remember, they'll say, they'll agree with anything we, we, we ask them about Jesus, even if they are a demon, they, they'll agree with it because they're saying they agree with it but confess it really means with your whole heart. So the demons are lying to you. They're not confessing it because they <laughs> yeah. are, are really in a line with it. Um, yes. Yes, because it also talks, it, you know, I noticed another thing um, is that <clears throat> with, you know, when looking at the Bible, when you're looking at a verse, to go back to scriptures that are very similar, that seem to be saying the same thing and usually mm-hmm. you can cross reference and say oh well this is what this verse is talking about and mm-hmm. if you go to like second john 1 7 7 9 and 10 it says for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that jesus christ has come in the flesh this is a deceiver and an antichrist whosoever transgresseth the and abide not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, nor bid him Godspeed. So in mm-hmm. other words, it's, they, it's the doctrine of Christ. It's the whole counsel of the Bible exactly. that they better exactly. agree with. You know, because yeah, look at the exactly. woman, the, look at the, the damsel. You know, mm-hmm. she was following, uh, you know, uh, the apostles around, and she said, uh, these men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. She's pointing at them, saying, listen to them. They're mm-hmm. the ones that's going to show us how to be saved. But mm-hmm. Paul turns around, being grieved in his spirit, turns and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. The, mm-hmm. the reason why he knew she was not of God was because he seen that she was bringing her masters much gain by soothsaying. He mm-hmm. seen what she was doing, and that was not according to Scripture. You know, he knew that she was not of God because yeah. you know, she she was possessed with the spirit of divination. You know, mm-hmm. so and and, like, and, uh, and there you go. There, there's yeah. there's that demon of divination even saying things that are biblically true. Um, uh, you know, and as you say, so it's the whole doctrine of the Bible, it's the whole doctrine of Jesus Christ, and I guess that's why, you know, in the past when I've told people to test the spirits in Jesus' name, I've said to them, you know, say the key things, like, did Jesus Christ die on the cross for our sins? Is the blood of Jesus, you know, what cleanses us? Is Christ the only way to salvation? And several other key things from the Bible, because... Sometimes a demon can be really stubborn, and it's almost as if you have to um, say quite a few of these things before it eventually gives up and and shows its true colours. But again, not that we should get into talking with them, I don't mean that, but I think it just um, does show that demons can sometimes lie and and just agree with us when we um, challenge them about Jesus. 
Yes, because we know, like say for instance, if um, somebody come up at the foot of my bed, <laughs> you know, um, and and appear to me as being like say someone in my family that passed away, um, mm -hmm. right away, I already know that's not that person because I know yeah. what the scriptures say. So I'm like, no, I mean, there is no, if it's something like that to me, it's like, I'm just going to cast it out because I exactly. know it's not, exactly. uh, you know, the, the uh, earthbound spirit of a dead loved one. So now if it's a holy angel and or it seems to be, and they, they appear, I will still try to cast it out. I will mm -hmm. be, uh, mm -hmm. but if it comes with a warning or something, okay, you know, and I'll pray about it afterwards. But um, I just don't, you know, because that right there, like I said, if it's a uh, looks like a departed spirit of a dead loved one, then I I mm -hmm. already know that it's not according to scripture, you know. Totally, and I agree with you. You know, I, I'm I would be the same. I think if a so-called ghost turned up, I, there is no point in me even. Uh, uh, trying to test it in Jesus' name because the chances are it's going to just to try to deceive you. Yes. And why do I even need to test it when I know already it's definitely a demon? Therefore, I rebuke it and cast it out. Uh, yeah. yeah, in Jesus' name. And, and when they do go, then it's pretty obvious it wasn't a ghost after all because they're not just going to scream and leave it Jesus' name unless unless they were really a demon. Right. Um, That's right. That's right. And I've never seen a case where it wasn't, where it did not go, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, um, me too, you yeah. know, and, and it's so funny because if you, it's not funny, you know, really, but what I mean is it's odd and it should be a telling sign is that uh -huh. whenever you hear of hauntings and somebody goes into a building and they get all these, um, EVPs or pictures or whatever, the evidence usually always shows that is not only that little child, you know, there, that, mm -hmm. well, it, the spirit that portrays to be a little child, but also it'll be some kind of spirit there also that's negative, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's also something that the people don't really realize, that it's actually just that spirit that's evil there, the demonic mm -hmm. spirit that's portraying and pretending and masquerading to be the dead yeah. child, you know, yeah. and it's yeah. just showing its true colors here and there, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I seen one show on uh, one day, and I was going through the channels, and it was actually, I, I'm not sure what the name of it was. I think it was, uh, oh, gosh, I can't think of it now. I'm sorry. But anyway, it was one of those shows where they had went into a place, and they were talking, and it was like a woman that was like a, uh, a medium, or, or she was doing, she was trying to do a clearing. Mm -hmm. And she said something about, well, if the knock is loud, then that means it's it's an evil spirit. But uh -huh. if it's soft and light, and and, it, and she even did it on the wall yep. to make them, you know, to show them. Uh -huh. If it's light like this, then it's more likely it is a spirit of a good a good spirit or an earthbound spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how in the world? You mean to tell me you don't think that demons aren't, aren't smart enough, you know, yeah, to try to is. pretend to be, you know, something mm -hmm. easy, mm -hmm. good or something? They've, uh, they've just listened to everything she's just said. So they, yeah. <laughs> they could just do what she said just to fit yes. in with what she's saying. That's right, that's right, that's right. And I remember um, picking up on what you said there, Dana. Uh, Michael Cummings, a friend of mine, a deliverance minister, um, he's been doing deliverance for, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years. He used to be on Revelation TV. And yes. he, told, he told me that of all the times, and he uh, does deliverance like on a weekly basis, sometimes oh, wow. every day, every day. Yes. Uh, he does it over the phone, he, he travels. Oh, um, God bless him. I know, and he does it free. It's not like he charges for it either. Yeah. He um, he told me that not once has he went to a house where a so-called ghost has been, and he's, uh, you know, rebuked it in Jesus' name, and it stayed a ghost. He said 100% of the time they have shown themselves as demons, uh -huh. even, when the per even when the person who lived in the house thought it was a ghost. So... Yes. And that's been my experience, too, whenever I've been called to a house and the people have thought it was a ghost. And yet, yeah. you know, in Jesus' name, when we challenged it together, it, it showed itself as a demon. Yes, yes, ma'am. I think that's also what happened with us, really, is when we started, uh, when it, the hauntings just got so bad, and we started rebuking it in Jesus' name. Now, even though we were not, 
you know, being followers of Christ. I mean, I did believe Jesus was real and he was who he said he was, you know, at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and everything, but we would say in the name of Jesus, leave. And it would, it, it would, it would, it would leave, you know, Mm -hmm. but it would always return. And I think that that's exactly what it was, was, and then it would just got so bad. And I think it probably was because I started, you know, wielding that name of Jesus and it started uh, showing itself for what it really was. You know, I really believe that because that was when it started really getting worse and worse. And the more, the worse it got, the more I sought, you know, for true deliverance and what to do, you know, because everything else wasn't working, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, you also mentioned about about the seven sons of Shiva uh, in relation to, just like we said, but you can use the name of Jesus and it can sometimes work, but sometimes it doesn't just because you're not walking in that relationship with him. So do you want to pick up on that, the seven sons of Shiva? Yes, because uh, yes, uh, um, like in that in that passage where he says, he says that he commanded the uh, spirit to go and he said, by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. You know, so that was basically saying, you know, the one that Paul knows. It wasn't the one I know, you know, that's not what he was mm-hmm. saying. And the demon was saying, you know, I know, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So this guy was, he, 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 he did not have a relationship with Jesus. He did not know Jesus himself. He knew yeah. of Jesus. And there are a lot of investigators even that know of Jesus that don't believe in him or follow him, but they will be very quick to the draw to use his name if they get themselves in a situation you know where a haunting turns violent or turns bad or they want it they get scared you know they'll use the name of Jesus and sometimes it does seem to work now sometimes Mm -hmm. I think that might be Jesus also showing them hey yeah I am the real you know just like if you think about Christy McGuire when she said in the name of Jesus and she heard that demon screaming on the recorder you know Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. was almost like, you know, like she said, I, I was a Christian, you know, but I was doing the things I was doing. I was a Christian witch, you know. Yeah. So, you know, she wasn't really following Christ and being Christ-like, but yet mm-hmm. that demon reacted to his name, you know, when she yelled out, it, you know, mm-hmm. in the name of Jesus. And it, and it did that, but it makes you think, because it, it, a lot of times it will work, you know, but they but it mm-hmm. will come back because that person's not walking yeah. in, in, you know, with Christ and it does have an open door. Absolutely. You know? And as you say, it's, it's also um, evident that when, when it happens, it's because Jesus is trying to let the person know, yeah. hey, when you're using my name, this works because I really am who I say I am. Amen. Um, and he's, he's almost using that as a, as a, a, a fishing bait, yes. you know, to, to try and uh, uh, pull them in. Yes, ma'am. Yes. To just... himself. Yep, to reveal himself as the true living God, you know, and, and the Son of God, and this is who he is. He, he he is who he says he is, you know. I have heard of cases like that, you know, where uh, you know, I think it was another paranormal investigator I seen. He was on uh, one of those shows, and he actually, I believe that's what he did, and he realized who Jesus really was, <laughs> you know. It's like, oh, wow, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, as you say, Dana, um, it's not as clear cut as as many people think. If they just take that, uh, if they just take the the verses in one John four about testing the spirits in Jesus' name, because um, you had mentioned to me, you know, you'd mentioned uh, to the listeners, sorry, about the damsel, the spirit of the divination, that she was even able to to say things about God by the spirit um the divination spirit um and also the the whole thing about the the, the demoniac can you ma- can you talk about that cuz you mentioned that to me offline yes. yes uh that's the one that had went to hold on I'm sorry let me pull that up real quick um when uh Jesus and them come off the boat and immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no not with chains, because he had been, uh, I'm sorry, I'll just go ahead and go up to verse uh, 6. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, 
What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. You see, so this was the mm-hmm. demon, not just the man. This was the demon. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. demon was, was acknowledging who Jesus was. <laughs> For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And then Jesus had asked, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. I think that Mm -hmm. when Jesus asked him what was his name, he did that because he was wanting to make sure, okay, I'm talking to the demons, you know, Mm -hmm. not, not, I mean, when I say talk to them, I mean just telling them to get out, (laughs) you know, and and that they could go in the pigs, but he did not sit and just, you know, hold conversations with them. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But, but anyway, that's a whole nother um, thing, but. But, but basically, was, you, your point is spot on that that, that was legion. So yeah. a heck of a lot of demons, thousands of demons, and yet they were saying, yes, Jesus is the Son of God, and they were even going to worship him. So, you know, they can um, say true things about Jesus, um, or they can lie. So um, yes. it's, it's not just a case of, well, you say the name of Jesus, you'll know for sure if it's a demon or an angel. You have to take all of that into account. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And also, I, I noticed that if you go to a lot of the cult websites, like, the, say, for instance, the Mormons, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. if you go to their website and it says what we believe about Jesus, it has a list of what they believe. And one is Jesus is the Son of God, the only begotten Son in the flesh. Mm-hmm. And then another one is Jesus performed miracles. They believe that Jesus taught his gospel of glad tidings or good news that salvation had come to earth through him. And they also say that Jesus was born of a virgin. Now, this Mm -hmm. is Mormons, which we know is a cult. Yeah. And, you know, there's not going to be a a godly spirit behind them, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. with every with every uh, where truth is spoken or when heresy is spoken, there is a spirit behind it. Um, and, and, and often, you know, a lot of these cults or, or false religions, false gods, sometimes they have started because a so-called angel has appeared and, and given a teaching to someone. Um, and it, it's like 99% biblical, but that 1% that, that's not is, um, can be yes. the, where, where the... And then, of course, the heresies take off and all sorts of yes. um, biblical so right. stuff. Take, takes off. So as you say, yeah, even the, the, the Mormons or other cults or so on can say that Jesus came in the flesh, etc. Um, and yet it's, it's through a demon that's, that's speaking. And I think, again, that highlights, I know people might be a bit confused about that, but I think that highlights going back to the authority of Jesus Christ and walking closely with him. If the person's walking closely with him and if the person is if fully following him, walking in holiness and so on, um, that's very often where you see the test will work more effectively. Um, yes. Can yes. I say, and, and I think a wee example might be, uh, for example, I think we all probably know of some Christian friends who have been seeking the Lord for years uh, for physical healing, and it, it so far hasn't happened yet but they keep seeking the Lord and they maybe go to quite a few healing meetings at their church or some visiting um, healing evangelists might come. They go along there and no matter, you know, who prays for them, they just don't seem to get healed. And then one day someone comes who, um, let's say, is a bit more well known for for the, the healing power of Jesus in them being really, really strong. And while, lo and behold, a whole lot of people get healed that hadn't been healed before. So, you know, what are we saying? That that, that the name of Jesus can work more effectively through some Christians than through others? Well, basically, yeah. Um, uh, uh, And it's not because Jesus' name isn't powerful, but it's just that it's up to each individual Christian to be walking really close to him to the extent that his power and his anointing and his authority is flowing through you so strongly that people can't help but get healed or uh, delivered when uh, you lay hands on them, Uh, even to the extent where some Christians will say they can look at other Christians and see a faint light about them and they can tell they're not walking that close to Jesus, but they can tell when a Christian comes in the room who's really walking close to Jesus because the light shining out them is just enormous. 
Um, and I think that kind of a highlights that point as well. Yes, it does. It really does. And I, I really want to mention something here because um, I don't want anyone to um, mistake what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, but where I had said uh, when the truth is spoken or when heresy is spoken, you know, that there's a spirit behind it. Okay, now sometimes error can be spoken regarding Scripture, but this does not necessarily mean that they are a false prophet. A babe in Christ or even a mature Christian can err, and we always will, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, we, we as do. we are learning. And But a true believer will want the truth, though, and they will, um, you know, seek the truth, and, and they will be corrected, you know. So I don't want everyone to think that just because I said that, that that means that if you make a mistake in the Bible or something, because I, you know, I do that all the time, you know, so mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not something that I, I just want to make sure and clear that up. <laughs> Oh, you know. totally, and I agree with you too. I hope no one thinks I'm saying that either. And, um, you know, I think on one of my shows with Mark Hunneman last year, I did actually share about a time when I was in error about something um, in the Bible and what actually happened to me and how God got me out of that, you know, and I yeah. repented and, and he showed me the error I was in. So, yeah, none of us are saying that, Dana, but thanks for, for uh, yeah. clarifying that because that's that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, because I'd hate them to feel that way, you know. Um, oh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But I noticed, like, with this um, uh, testing uh, the spirits, I noticed it's a, it's a problem really comes in when people think they can test the spirits with their feelings and emotions, you know. Mm -hmm. Instead of testing it with Scripture, you know, one of the worst things we can do is test something by our emotions or feelings. Uh, we also see this as very common in the paranormal community, which can be expected, not knowing the scriptures, you know, um, but we also see a lot of Christians doing that today. You know, they'll say, well, no, I think it was of God because I felt good. I felt good about it. I got a warm feeling. I got goosebumps. I mean, I've done that, you know, where I felt like something mm -hmm. was right because of the way I felt. And that's mm -hmm. so easy to do, you know, but the Bible tells us, it says, um, uh, something about your heart, who is desperately wicked, who could know it. Uh, you know, we can't trust on our own feelings or our own understanding, lean not on our own understanding, you know, things like that. We just, the Bible really has to be our gauge. You know, it has to be what we go to, to see if something is of God, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and like I said, what, what, like if something were to appear in front of us, just test it as far as rebuke it in Jesus' name, you know, and if it if it doesn't go and if it has a message, it'll tell us the message and it'll go, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But also I noticed like in, in um, 1 John 4 where it talks about, you know, uh, if the message really is coming from God, because if you look at it, it is confirmed in several places in the passages where it says, um, it's really a truly, it's like we test them by their theology of Jesus. You know, and of the Bible, what what they're telling us as far as the Bible, you know, exactly. uh, the yeah. entire Bible's true message is summed up in Jesus and what he did for us. Because you can even see that, see that prophesied even before it happened, you know, um, what it is saying. Do they confess the Christ of the scriptures, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and like I was saying, the word confess, because if you notice in that First uh, John 4 where it talks about do they confess that Jesus come in the flesh. It says, but the word confess means to believe it in our heart and to proclaim it as truth. Not mm -hmm. only just say something, because if we just say it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we believe it in our heart or proclaim it as truth, you know? Yeah, exactly. And as you say, a demon can see it and he can believe it, but it doesn't mean he wants to follow Jesus. Obviously. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the Bible tells us, you know, not everyone that says Lord, Lord either, you know, will mm -hmm. enter the kingdom of God, you know. So, yeah. um, but, you know, even if false religions can say these things, you know, you know, we know that it's not just that one one um, statement, you know, that we're looking for. Because also in the same passage, it also says down there, verse 15, it says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God, you know. And, and, mm -hmm. and if you also look at like Isaiah 8, 20, it says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, you know. 
there's other places in the Bible that tells us, you know, if they don't, if they don't talk according to this word, <laughs> you know. So I, that's what I believe that First John four is actually talking about, you know. Um, yeah. You uh, know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I agree with you about feelings. You know, um, people can can feel something as God or feel something as holy or pure. Um, they may get, you know, goosebumps or see light or whatever but yes you know because sometimes the, the the feelings of being healed for example people have been healed by um evil spirits Ooh, and it so feels <laughs> you know or or and it feels just the same kind of a euphoric feelings mm-hmm. as being healed by jesus does because satan and demons they know how to mimic the anointing of god and make it yes. feel the same so uh, we can't test stuff just by feelings Yes, yes. And just like you and Mark talked about before, you know, you can get the good feelings. And there is a false Holy Spirit, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. an unholy spirit, <laughs> you know. So we we definitely know that we can't go by feelings, you know, that it just, it does. It reminds me of like ghost hunters and, and you know, these people that go in to a building and they sit there and they try to be a sensitive. Is that what they call it? <laughs> uh-huh, <laughs> Where they uh-huh. go in and they think that they can uh, feel if, you know, there's an evil spirit in the room or if it's a good spirit in the room and all this stuff, you know. But, yeah. but see, that's going by feelings instead of actually going by what the scriptures say, you know. Mm-hmm. So we have to go by what the scripture says. <laughs> but, yeah, and also not going by what some entity tells you just because the entity... Um, nine times out of ten is probably masquerading as a good entity when it actually is an evil one. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. That's right. <laughs> That's what they they say. <laughs> but so, D- Dana, thanks so much for 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 sharing all that, and I hope it um, sheds a bit more light on on all of that. Yeah. Um, topic and get do uh, please get back to where you left off regarding sharing your testimony. Oh, okay. Yes, um, I, uh, it, you know, I, I got into the paranormal <clears throat> first because I was fascinated with the paranormal, but I also thought I was helping other people, but I also thought I was helping spirits, <laughs> you know, earthbound spirits, like to move on into the light, which is very common, you know, in the paranormal mm-hmm. community, and um, we really believe that, and and. One time, uh, in particular, we went on a uh, investigation. It was at the uh, Putnam Hotel. It was in Deland, Florida, and we did a table tipping there. And it was upstairs in the. Uh, it, they used it for a storage area, but it used to be a uh, area where the daycare was for the kids and everything. <clears throat> but anyway, we also got a lot of voices in there of uh, spirits claiming to be children and all this too. But anyway, while we were there doing the table tipping, um, we were getting answers, and uh, it seemed to be a spirit that was saying they needed help and that they wanted to move on. Mm-hmm. Well, then, out of nowhere, there was a shelf that was behind us, and I had my ghost box sitting on it. Now, I wasn't doing the ghost box during the table tipping because that was a whole different, you know, I never usually ever did that. You know, mm-hmm. I, would, I did that separate from that. But anyway, we my ghost box was sitting on there, and it was off. Well, we were sitting there doing this table tipping, and we got to the part where it was talking about how it wanted to move on and all this. Well, then all of a sudden, my ghost box just turned on. And for anybody out there that knows about um, ghost hunts and all this, they would know that when you have a ghost box, it's actually a radio that is modified on the inside to where it will not stop on one channel and play an entire song or, you know what I mean? It will consistently, um, it will consistently search and, and scan the channels. And you'll mm-hmm. pick up little bits and pieces of words, you know, as it's going through. And you would mainly hear like what people describe as white noise. So what we would do is the way they work is you would hear it going and you would put together words and it sounded like it said something, you know, and, and do it that way. But anyway, I had it off and then all of a sudden it cut on. Well, this song came on and it played the whole song and the song was actually a Christian song and it was something about going home. 
Well, we're sitting there just as we've got to this very emotional part of the seance Mm -hmm. where we thought we were going to help this spirit to move on. Well, Mm -hmm. this radio, this ghost box turns on and starts playing this song. Mm -hmm. Well, we're sitting there and we all just start crying. (laughs) Everyone there. I mean, there was not a dried, a dry eye in the, in the room (laughs) because Mm -hmm. it was so emotional. Yeah. And then after the song got finished, and we know, we recognized what the song was saying, you know, and it, it finished and everything, that was it. So then we started talking to the spirit, telling it it can go now and all this, and we went ahead and we 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 thought that we had talked it into moving on. Well, like I said, it was such a, a powerful uh, experience, and and it's it's. Uh, it's not true, as we know. I mean, these are demons. And it's really basically what this whole idea is is saying is that there is um, post-mortem salvation. Like mm-hmm. someone can get saved after death, which, mm-hmm. is, which is a lie, you know, because it, you know, what it is is it's given false hope by suggesting that we have more time to get right and come to believe after death, you yeah. see. And another thing um, I just actually just occurred to me was this spirit never mentioned anything about Jesus or that uh, it were repented or, Mm -hmm. you know, or any of that, which is actually very interesting to know, but it never did. And, you know, it makes me think of like, say, Luke 16, the rich man and the beggar. Okay, Um, the rich man, he begged Abraham uh, for for a drop of water. He also begged Abraham to go tell his brothers not to come to that place of torment. But he did not mention anything about himself coming out of that place of torment because, and the reason why, is because there is no hope for those that are damned and in hell. Uh, Exactly. You know, we did not see him repenting and coming to a place of believing in Jesus. And we didn't hear him asking God to forgive him or... Mm -hmm to go witness to his other dead relatives, if that was the case. Exactly, yeah. You know, where people can be saved after death. He never, there was no mention, or he he had no kind of, uh, uh, he wasn't worried about those that had already died. It was just the living that he wanted them to go tell, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, it says, And as it is appointed unto men, wants to die, but after this, the judgment. It doesn't mm-hmm. say there's anything in between. You know, the Bible tells us, um, you know, that if we do not believe, we're condemned already. You know what I mean? That's why if you're if you're not a believer, when you die, yes, you're going to go to hell. You know, I mean, it's sad, but it's the truth, you know. Mm-hmm. But, but, but we have to also not think, well, God is so bad because he sends people to hell. Because he gives us so much opportunity. You know, he sent his only begotten son to die for us, to make a way. He makes he makes provision, you know, and he's not going to tempt us beyond what we're able to bear. He, he's a faithful and he's just, just God, you know. Um, mm-hmm. The Bible tells us in Proverbs eleven seven, it says, When a man, when a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish, and the hope of unjust men perish. And in other words, that's why you, uh, we didn't see anything in Luke 16 where the rich man was saying, you know, please help me. You know, can you save me out of this place of torment? Because he knew there was no hope. There is mm-hmm. no hope to those that are in hell, you mm-hmm. know. And and it, even in Ecclesiastics 9, 3, and 6. Now, this verse, I this passage, I was always confused about in the past. I always thought that it just, you know, because there is questions where it says, for the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. I always thought that meant, okay, well, we're dead, we're in the ground, you know, that's it. We don't know anything. But that's talking about the body in the first, you know, first off. But anyway, where it starts off, it says, and if you think about this while I'm, while I'm reading it, it really mm-hmm. is meaning that they have no more reward here after they die, it's over, you know, as far as any chances of being saved or anything like that. Because it says, this is an evil um, among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil, and madness is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. 
For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know, know that they shall die. In other words, they know, so they have hope. You know, they're going to, uh, they have time. They can, they can uh, you know, come to believe or, you know, whatever. But then it says, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Meaning in this life, their earthly physical life. That's what it means when it says under the sun. It's talking about in this life, in our earthly physical life, you know, before we die. Um, so that's another good thing to think about, you know, mm -hmm. um, is that we really don't have a chance after that, you know, and that, that, I mean, who else would want us to think that, you know, the enemy, because he, he wants, to, exactly. you know, he doesn't yeah. want us to prepare and to be ready and to get right with God, you know, before we die, because he wants everyone to believe, oh, you have time. There is no hell. I mean, there's many lies, you know, um, it, you know, it's just not, you know, like I said, with, with, and with the, um, the rich man, you know, he, he never mentioned anything about his dead relatives, you know, or anybody witnessing mm -hmm. to them or trying to get them out of hell <laughs> if they are, because I'm sure that everyone he knew wasn't, you know, saved. Yeah. You know? And, and like you say, you know, that's uh, Luke 16, verse 24, when he cried out and said, you know, Abraham, have mercy on me and, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So he was asking for a sip of water. He wasn't saying, uh, please uh, pray for me that, that I can yep. uh, be saved. Uh, please pray for me that I can get out of purgatory or that I can have a second chance at salvation. Um, because he knew he was in hell and, and, and he couldn't. That was it. Um, Amen. And I think that's why so many of the, the false religions and so on will talk about things like reincarnation and, uh, yes, you're right. you know, you can, you, you can come back or um, you can make a better go of things next time in a new yeah. life. Um, and even that and, and what you've just shared there about Luke 16 in itself shows that the whole notion of earthbound spirits or ghosts is such a lie because they're not really dead people after all. They can't be um, having just looked at the passages you've looked at, and including Hebrews 9 and so on. Yes, yes. And I believe that if any one person that is in hell today, if they could repent and given that chance now, they would. Oh, yeah. So many of them. You know are probably I mean? the, the majority of them. Yeah, probably. So just because it, I mean, think about it. If they, if they were, if it was possible, none of mm. them would be there. <laughs> they would exactly. all be repenting. You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know. The Bible also says that every person one day will confess also that Jesus Christ is Lord. Does that yeah. mean that everyone will ultimately be saved? No, no. And that would be after death. You know. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing about salvation after death is 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 of the enemy. It truly mm -hmm. is. And and it's a, and it is kind of close to the whole doctrine of um, earthbound spirits and ghosts. So we're not going off at a, a complete tangent by bringing that up. In fact, it's really very relevant and very helpful in showing um, yes. what we're, what we're talking about. Yes. Um, and even you know talking about um, as you'll know because of the field you were in with the paranormal investigations, whether it's ghost hunters, mediums, or other types of new agers or so on, very often um, they will talk about when someone's dying, uh, they will urge that person to go to the light. Um, I remember talking to a woman who was ex-Illuminati, and she said that's what they did. They encouraged people to go to the light. But remember, they believed Lucifer is God, and that light that they were talking about is actually not the light of Christ. It's the false light. It's the it's the light of Lucifer, if you like, um, that so many New Agers are attracted to um, because they, they see this light and they believe it's godly, but in actual fact it's not. And so it's not about sending someone to the light. You can't trust anything that happens to shine brightly in front of you on your deathbed. You have to trust instead on 
uh, reaching out to Jesus Christ for salvation and hopefully a lot uh, sooner than, than your deathbed too. Yes, amen, amen. I think a lot of it comes too where they they get hell and the lake of fire mixed up, you know, because it does say that later, you know, um, that hell and the dead will be delivered and, and thrown into the lake of fire. You know, that's after judgment day, you know, um, mm-hmm. but that has no, that has nothing to do with saying that, you know, people don't go to hell today because if that's the case, where's the rich man? You know, mm-hmm. I don't believe the rich man was saved. I, I don't, you know, cause no. I really don't. <laughs> No, I don't I mean, either. But, you know, and, and Jesus, when he, um, in in Matthew, uh, there was a certain scribe that came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee wherever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Instead of worrying about the dead, Jesus basically told his disciple to come and follow him to preach to the living. <laughs> you know, mm. not to say mm. now that, that his father wasn't saved. We don't know that. You know, I'm just yeah. saying. But there was no uh-huh. mention, you know, uh, of that either. You know, so it's just, mm. it's just yeah. interesting, you know, to know. Basically, basically, Jesus didn't have a ministry to the dead. No. Uh, and neither did the disciples. They didn't have a ministry to talking to the dead or trying to help the dead. Amen. The only way whatsoever is, you know, when uh, Jesus literally raised Lazarus from the dead and, and, and raised the little girl from the dead. Um, yes. But that's uh, not a metaphor for seances. It was a literal, uh, you know, bodily, physical <laughs> resurrection yes, from the dead, right. which is entirely different. Yes, you're right. And it was clear on that, too, that it was his physical body. Because it talked mm-hmm. about after it was three days and all that, you you know, um, and it went into that. But um, so it was definitely talking about he was dead, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so you're right about that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but. So uh, pick up from, we have about five or six minutes left. So pick up from where you were um, in your testimony. Okay. Um, is that, you're talking about where the, well, we had just gave, um, Oh, well, we heard the song going home, okay? Mm -hmm. And then everybody literally was crying. It it was such an emotional thing, you know? Well, I had always wondered after that, what was that song? (laughs) You know, I I just never knew after that. I never heard it again. But it was actually like about a year ago, I was at a funeral of another, of a relative of mine, and I heard that song (laughs) come on, and it was going home. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was just, oh my goodness, it was crazy because I... I just never knew, you know, but it's just the whole thing, the whole idea, you know, about savings, you know, these souls after they're dead and, and Jesus and, and, you know, losing them. And, you know, the Bible tells us that God, Jesus does not leave us or forsake us. You know, he will not do that. And, and, you know, even children, you know, they say that there's children lost and earthbound and they can't, you know, find, they have to, they have to have the ghost hunter help them. You know, that's what's so funny. They they have to have the ghost hunter help them <laughs> and to move on. Only the ghost hunter can hear them on their EVP analysis, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. God, but God can't hear them, <laughs> you know. Well, exactly what happens in a, in a country that maybe has no ghost hunters, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Or, or, or EVPs. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess they wouldn't have a chance, you know, but, but that's awful mm-hmm. to think that way because... You know, God says that we mean much more to him than many sparrows. And he knows every time a sparrow falls on the ground, he knows every hair on our head, you know, mm-hmm. at all times, you know. So, and it, it even says the Bible, it even says in the Bible, it says God beholds um, the, the well, what does it say? The evil and the good all the time, I mean, at all times. I can't, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing. I don't have it in front of me. But, you know, he does have his eyes on everything at all times. Yeah. You know, he's mm-hmm. omnipresent. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's no way for someone to die and escape God. There's no way. And there's yep. actually a verse that says that too, doesn't it? <laughs> that even after death, uh, you know, that uh, that someone can't hide from God even after death you or something. You can't hide. No, you can't hide. Um, even yeah. if you were to be at the very foot of the ocean. Um, yes. There's a verse that talks about that. God still can see you. 
uh, wherever you are. So, yeah. and I think you know, upon the very second of of death, um, we as Christians do believe that um, if the person has made Christ their Saviour and Lord, even if it's not until their deathbed, but they do genuinely mean it, they have repented and asked Jesus Christ into their heart, upon the, the very second of death, an angel comes and, and takes them to heaven. Um, on the other hand, if a person hasn't had their sins forgiven by Jesus, um, a demon will, will appear and, and take them to hell. I know it's, it sounds such a horrible thing to talk about, but the reality is upon death, either an angel comes or a demon comes, um, a person can't just get earthbound and lost. Yes, and it's also interesting you brought that up about the these um, uh, near-death experiences where people that went to hell, and then they knew in their spirit that God had told them that he was giving them another chance to come back and to believe, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, before it was their time. Well, mm-hmm. God didn't say, well, it's okay anyway. You can be saved after death. You exactly. Know? So, yeah. you know, that, that exactly. would go against that too. Well, yeah, you wouldn't need to give people warnings if, if you could just get saved after death. Amen. That's right. That's right. And um, we have a couple of minutes left now. So, um, again, we'll need to have you back again next time, Dana. All right. <laughs> I look forward to, hear, to it. <laughs> yeah, me too, to, to hear some more. And um, so please do uh, remind the listeners of your YouTube channel and your blog. Before you do that, I just want to remind folks that if they want to hear any of these recordings again, check it out on my YouTube channel, which is Laura Maxwell, ex The episodes we both refer to today with myself and Mark Hunneman, you can also find there. If you can't find the actual playlist of Mark Hunneman on it very easily, type his name in the search bar on my actual YouTube page and it will take you to our lists of past interviews. So, Dana, please um, remind folks of your YouTube, your blog, and then please pray for the audience. Okay, um, my YouTube is Exposing the Enemy, you know, just as it's spelled out. And then um, when you go to to my um, website, my blog, it is www.exposingtheenemy.com, except it starts with the X. I dropped off the E. So, um, and then, um, you know, like I said, a a few of my... Um, articles are shared on on Laura's uh, website, which is awesome. <laughs> Has a lot of good good articles on there, and that's ourspiritualquest.com. And um, I also recommend highly the shows that Laura did with Mark Hunman. <laughs> they they are excellent, good source of information for anything related to this subject. Um, and that just r- reminds me, as as Dana and I know, because we're friendly with Mark, he. Um, is doing a show tonight with someone at a radio show, so check out his uh, YouTube channel, which is Mark Hunneman. And he has done a very interesting series recently on his YouTube channel about residual energies and the truth of that whole notion. So check that out as well, guys. Yes. Well, um, Dana, please go ahead and pray. Okay. Dear Father, I ask that our message here today will minister to others that are in the occult or perhaps those that know someone that's in the occult, Lord, um, so that they can witness and share with them the information we've given. I pray that you will continue to bless Laura and her ministry. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, as it is accepted by us with the utmost humility and honor, Lord. Um, I ask that you also give others mercy and the grace that you have given us and saved us with. And thank you very much in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you so much, Dana. Uh, And listeners, um, please check out Dana's interviews that she's had with other radio hosts uh, recently. You'll find them on her YouTube channel and blog uh, as well as my own YouTube channel and blog because she goes into much more detail. In fact, one of your interviews I think lasted almost three hours, so really some great um, detail there for people. And um, please 
come back again next time to hear Dana's, well, it will be part four of our right. interview <laughs> with Dana. So it's an lovely. honor. It's, it's an lovely honor, that it's, it's an honor for me to, 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 to share your story with others. And um, let's uh, look forward to part four yeah. and speak to you then. Thank you. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.